If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. If we read the question again, it asks, how much work must we do? And the key phrase there is we do, because when they ask how much work we do, what they're asking for is the applied work. So this is how much work we would have to input into the system in order to move a charge from an infinite distance over to the center of the square. So we're looking for this applied work. And we know from this chapter that the applied work is equal to the charge multiplied by the change in potential that occurs as we move the charge from infinity to the center of the square. Now we can rewrite the change in potential as the final potential minus the initial potential. And another key concept is that because the charge is beginning its journey from an infinite distance, we can assume that the initial potential is equal to zero volts. So that's actually going to knock away this term right here, simplifying the equation to just the charge times the final potential. Now we already know the charge of this particle, it's positive 6e. What we need to figure out is the final potential. Now, again, we're moving the charge to the center of the square, so the final potential would be the potential right here at the center, and that becomes our task, is to find this potential right here. Now, we note that this picture contains point charges that are arranged on this square region, and the potential produced by point charges is equal to K multiplied by the charge divided by a distance. Now in this case, the distance would be the distance from each charge to the center of the square. And if we study this picture carefully, we're going to notice that there's a bit of a shortcut that's going on here. And what we want to do to understand that shortcut is direct our attention first to these two charges right here. Now we can see that the distance from this charge to the center is the same distance from this charge to the center. So their distances are indeed the same. Let's also note that their charges have the same magnitude, except one is negative and one is positive. Now, because the distance is the same and the charge have opposite magnitudes, that means when we add the potentials produced by these two charges, they're basically going to cancel. Symbolically, we could say that the sum of the potential of those two particles would be K multiplied by the charge of negative E divided by this distance right here that we can call r, plus the potential produced by the other charge, so that will be k multiplied by this charge, which is positive e, and then divided by the distance. But again, that distance is the same, it's r. When we add these two quantities together, they cancel out and become zero. So in essence, we can actually neglect or ignore these two charges. And for the same reason, we're going to end up ignoring these two charges as well, because once again, they're the same distance to the center of this square, and their charges have opposite magnitudes. This is negative 3e, and this is positive 3e. So they too will have potentials that cancel each other out. And if we continue to play this little game, we're going to see, in fact, that the potential produced by these two charges also cancels, because again, they're the same distance to the center of the square, and they have opposite magnitude charges, so we can ignore those. So in essence, the only charge that really matters that we need to consider for producing a potential in the center is this one right here. So we can erase the other particles and go ahead and calculate the potential that this charge produces at the center. And to do that, we would plug in K, which has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. We would multiply that by the charge of positive 3E, now we remember that E has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So we can plug that in. And then we'll divide by the distance. And that would be the distance from this charge to the center. We were told that the entire length of one side of the square was four centimeters. So of course this distance right here would be two centimeters. Let's also not forget to convert that into meters. So we would have 0 0.02 meters. So let's pick up our calculators and process this to see what the potential is at the center of the square. When we do that, we get 2.1576 times 10 to the minus 7 volts. This represents the potential at the center of the square, which will indeed be the final potential as we move the charge from infinity all the way to the center. So in other words, we can take this value and plug it in for the final potential. As for Q, that would be the charge of the charge that we're actually moving to the center and that had a value of positive 6e. Remember, this is the one that we were actually moving from infinity 
to the center of the square. So we'll plug in positive 6e for this charge here. So we've gone ahead and plugged in the known values. Note right here, this is that charge of plus 6e. We've just plugged in 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs for the value of e. And when we multiply this all out, we get approximately 2.1 times 10 to the minus 25 vol uh, joules actually, not volts. We're calculating work and the unit of work is joules. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and subscribe so you could stay tuned for other videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll post the solution to it on YouTube.